four stars and many years ago, I, re I remember getting some really good advice, right? I was just starting out about two decades ago. And basically, you know, I was speaking to a more experienced developer, right? And what he told me was very interesting. He said, good luck. And by the way, something else too. He said, in this field, 25% of your knowledge expires every year. Always remember that. Always keep on learning. And likewise, you know, you hear something like that. It's like 25%, what in the world? Well, it is true. I mean, if you're gonna be in technology, things do change quite rapidly. And I never forgot that lesson. Never, ever. And even now, you know, you get hit with these new things and it's like, it's like a challenge. Every year there's a challenge to stay up with it, right? In this latest case, we've got a lot of experienced performance tuners on AX2012, 2009, even AX4. And they're looking at D365 Cloud and just like, what is this, right? Okay, this series is dedicated to being able to introduce you to, to some of these brand new performance tuning tools or some of these new ways of doing things if you're in the cloud so that it's not such an issue. And I think that you're gonna like it a lot. So just hang on, you'll see that it's more of just the same, just a couple little adjustments and a few new tools and you should like it. This is part one of three. Part one, we're gonna talk about the query store. See you soon. Hope you love this series. Step number one, it all starts with the query store. What? Why the query store? What in the world? We can't even access production data. What do you mean the query store? Okay, all right, hear me out everybody. Basically what you gotta do is because Microsoft has access to production as of now and does not have the tools just yet, you have to order a restore of a database, right? To another environment where then you can go back and examine the query store. Query, the query store is really cool, right? You know, it's this store that basically stores all these queries and plans, right? Allows you to be able to change them. But also more importantly, the other thing that it does is it allows you to be able to um, examine the history of a database. Woo, really, really nice. You're gonna need this whether you're in the actually um, on-prem or the cloud, but still, right now we're talking about cl cloud. So the good thing is it restores and carries over with the database. Now that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Definitely. Now, a couple of gotchas right here if you're gonna use the query store. First of all, first thing you gotta do is as soon as you have Microsoft do the restore, so you know, you go into LCS, you create this little ticket, Microsoft does a restore, creating the ticket takes like all of 10 seconds, but unfortunately doing the actual restore itself after you get the initial environment can take a lot longer as we know, maybe for another series on how to speed that up, by the way, for some of you people who've been struggling with the packages taking forever to copy to dev environments. But what you do is you right click, go over to properties, One day it pops up, I promise. And you guys can see I'm like a little demo cloud that I've actually um, provisioned over here off my own little demo thing. And then what you do is, um, and, and then what you do is you go into the query store option. And you guys see, I set it to five minutes to capture. Now the reason why I did five minutes is you guys have to remember something. When it comes to being a technical architect, there's like this serious, serious rule that you can never ever break. Um, what happens at a client stays at a client or what happens at an organization stays at an organization. So I can't quite demo people's confidential information. So I had to kind of create my own use case and um, I just provisioned a machine and then basically start clicking through a bunch of things. So it's not quite as, well, it's not nearly as good as a real one, but you're gonna get the point. So I like to set the flush over here. You know, I set it to five to five just for the demo. Um, what you'll wanna do though is when you go to operation mode, usually by default, there's 30 days of captured information in there you'll usually wanna take this operation mode and set it to read only inside of a real environment. The reason being is read only says, don't add any new junk data from those dev environments and whatever, unless you need that junk data. You know, you're doing some hardcore performance testing or something. Um, instead, examine the primary data. So set it to read only, um, just as a tip, it's one of my own personal things that I like to do. Okay, now, once you finish doing that, that's great. You look inside of your database, let me cancel, and oh, there's all these goodies right over here, right? You got the query store and whatever else. This part is pretty cool. It saves you a ton of time. Okay, so let's put the camera on for just a second and talk about how serious this is. Extremely important to understand. I have to tell you, so back in my day, oh my God, did I just say that? Oh no, oh no, oh. You know, what happens whenever you're a developer and you like get in your 40s and you know, you start to get like those two decades of experience, you become old, it's horrible, it really is. I'm telling you, you know, other fields, you're in your 40s, you're a young person, right? Like I'm watching people from the Supreme Court in like their 50s and 60s and people are like, oh man, they're young, boom. But then we're sitting there watching developers in like your 40s, you're like, oh, right? But anyway, back in my day, um, there used to be this common assumption that held for many, many years. And this is what it was. 
The, ser the SQL Query Optimizer was never, ever wrong. Now, what was wrong were people. So if something was going on, you needed to go back and readjust the inputs you were giving by being able to adjust statistics, indexes, um, the actual queries themselves, you name it, to make sure that it kicked out the right sort of plan. Okay, then around 2005, Microsoft started to recognize something that was fundamentally different. Um, what they did was they came out with these plan guides basically, and, and what they did was they basically said, okay, you know what, what we can do is we can use these plan guides basically, and what they're gonna do is they'll allow you to quickly adjust the plan. So here's the idea. Don't use them like overuse them or whatever else, you know. But sometimes, though, what they started noticing was DBAs, you know, were starting to support more and more applications that had application specific logic where they just couldn't go in and just adjust the SQL very easily. You, um, um, many times they had to know the different coding frameworks, right? And they might have been supporting 100 different coding frameworks. So they didn't know all the coding frameworks, right? So in order to buy time, the idea was in order to buy time before a developer could come make the changes, what we would do is turn around and deploy a plan guide, which would basically tell SQL, giving a very um, um, high guidance on how to generate the plan. Okay, and the idea was don't ever use too many of them, right? Like less than 10 always, right? That was used to be the rule of thumb. You know, if you see less than 10 plan guides, uh-oh, that's a really poor DBA place, right? And shame on them. But it generally took off and you know, it worked and plan guides were simple to use. They were quick, they were easy. In many cases, you could avoid some of the more advanced understanding of statistics and indexes and whatever else that a person would need to be able to do their tuning. Okay, that's all going great and whatever else. And there, oh yeah, one more thing too about plan guides. Plan guides are all about what's happening now. Whereas traditionally going back and changing indexes and things like that takes time because you have to do a bunch of, you know, analysis and whatever else. Plan guides are very, very quick. You just instantly deploy them. It takes instance that second. Next thing you know, you're kicking, right? Um, very good for when you got that 12 o'clock slowdown. All right. And, you know, you can just imagine. Imagine being in like a warehouse, whatever. Well, ironically enough, um, somehow over time, plan guides begin to evolve in popularity more and more and more to where suddenly... Microsoft began to see a in tremendous increase. In fact, premier support for performance tuning, the number one thing that they implemented next to Dynaperf was plan guides. They would instantly walk into an implementation, right? I've seen it a million different times. And they're sitting there struggling, struggling, and suddenly they throw them, they throw in like six, seven, eight plan guides, and stuff's running good instantly at that moment. And everyone's like, oh my God, thank you so much, right? Um, huge number, right? And meanwhile, you know, you know, old time debuters like, oh, I can't believe this. Then what happened here is plan guides took off so much that in 2016, finally, and you've seen a lot of blog posts by DBAs talking about changed opinions, Microsoft introduces the query store, which basically makes it extremely easy to do plan guides. All you have to do is right click on the right click and click force plan, right? It's not all the way quite the same as the old way. Sometimes it doesn't force for certain reasons. That's beyond the scope of this. But basically what it did was it made it extremely easy to be able to apply plans. And this was great. I mean, now you could get them applied quickly. Not only that, but it also kept like a real time record of, of what's been going on in the SQL. So you can see things like what was causing the issues in SQL and what was causing all the reads and all the writes and all the performance stress and you name it. So Qu Query Store has just come out and it's just been like, oh! Okay, this is all great, but there's one fundamental assumption for our Dynamics people here in the cloud only. Currently, as of this date, we do not have access to production. Only Microsoft does, and we have no tools to give us that sort of access. So if you see a bad plan, there's nothing you can do. In fact, you can't really even see it anyway, to be honest with you. You can somewhat tell because there'll be a long running query and I'll, and I'll show you tools then. So I will show you ways to be able to diagnose SQL, but if you, get a, if you get a bad plan, you cannot change plans. Now, there's two options you can do though. First, number one, call Microsoft. It's a managed service place, right? Microsoft has the right to go inside of production and be able to change queries, indexes, things like that real time. Trust me, I've seen it on several assignments. So you can call them and if they agree with you, they could do it. Number two, the most common, the most common thing that you need to do, and this is what I do and what I'm showing you how to do, copy your database to another environment through a restore request. And then you can access the query store and you can go out and actually turn around and do all your analysis and you get a ton of great information. So what we're going to do in this next section is we're going to see just how easy it is to use the query store because this is a very essential part of your performance tuning D365 strategy. And for many of you, you're going to start to see, I hope you're starting to get it it actually makes things easier. Thank you. So amazingly, it's actually pretty simple to use this tool once you get the hang of it. Okay, watch this part. We start out, we heard something's been going slow, right? Oh, okay, something's been going slow. Let's figure out what it is. All right, start right here at overall resource consumption first. And what you do is you just go ahead and take overall resource consumption, double click on it, and then, hmm, let's start looking. Oh boy, 
on um, on on um, on 918, if you notice over here, something was going slow. Hmm. Or something was using up more resources. It wasn't really going slow, but this does look a little bit suspicious, suddenly that we've got 16 seconds, right? Now, the first thing I do is I take a look and I like to go into configure right there. And you guys can see, pretty neat. You can actually take it and let's put a custom time interval on this. So very self-explanatory. Let's go 918 to 919. And I can tell you why right now. This machine's only been um, actually working for one day. I just deployed it. So let me hit apply. Let me hit okay. Uh-oh, Brandon, what did you do? We didn't see anything, but wait, watch this. I love this view right over here. So then I come back and I click on standard grid. And look at that. Oh, I can start to see some things. Hmm, let's take it back a little bit further and make it even better. Let's go over here and let's go 918, but not, let's take it all the way from 917 to 919 this time. And we could just, well, actually, you know what? let's leave it on 918. Let's make a point, let's make it real simple. 918, but let's change it this time to where I first opened it up to say one o'clock PM or even, yeah, one o'clock PM is good. There we go. Let's apply it. La, 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 la. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a refresh with some data. So you guys saw how I used to configure step one to be able to set the interval, to be able to get it going correctly so you can see your true data. Now, normally the refresh doesn't take this long, but right now it's just acting up on this demo machine. Keep in mind, this is these machines are... Um, a little expensive sometimes, so I had to kind of provision one of the lower machines instead of one of the higher machines, just in case anyone's wondering. And there we go, we've got some data. Hmm. Very interesting data during these intervals, right? Look at that 918 over there, period, right in there. Something was going on. Let's go ahead and take a look. So first thing we see over here is we see total duration, we see total logical reads, and we can kind of understand that at this particular point, look at this right here. Here we, had, here we had less duration, about 20 seconds, right? Here we had about 43 seconds, but notice over here the logical reads. And you guys may have noticed that once again, um, I, I taught you previously that logical reads were extremely important. All right, so we, we, we first pay attention with our eyes where we start to spot some things. Why would it take less time to do a little over half of the logical reads? Or why did it take more time to do a little over half of the logical reads then over here. Okay, now watch this, this is really cool. So you're sitting there looking at this and you're investing, you're like, hmm, I wanna see what happened during this interval. So let me just go ahead and click this. Woo -hoo -hoo. Watch this, watch this. So you double click on it. It's gonna now pull the data for that interval. Watch this part. Some of you might be like, why is Azure going so slow? It varies throughout the day. When other people are using your Azures, as we all know, it'll go a lot slower because, you know, it's just the way that's working when you've got some of those shared resources. So it depends on what time you use it. Okay, so now it's gotten pretty cool, right? Now we've got it all showing and we've got things um, coming in. You guys can see that right over here, I'm gonna go to this second query and it's pretty cool. You know, first of all, I can see all the times a query ran with a certain plan. There we go, you guys can see their plan 440, they're each co color coded. And I can even see the times, like for example, at this time it ran in 7.44 milliseconds, but at this time it ran at, um, it ran at 14.32 milliseconds. Now that's pretty neat because now you've got a context. You can see like a query that's degraded in performance suddenly that's using the same plan, the same query, right? You can see logical reads, you can see writes, whatever else. Um, you can even turn around and see parameters. Like for example, I'll come over here to updates, right click on it, click on property. So I went to the update section of the plan and sure enough in every single plan, you can go down and you'll see parameter list on one of the, um, on one of the sections of it and there we go. There's the actual parameter list. So I've, I can actually replicate this, take it into SQL and start tuning it. So now I've got a context. I know what happened. I've got accurate query stats and I can go as in depth as I need to on SQL. So it's really good. I can actually see everything. And let me go back to my um, handy dandy um, grid format because we just love the grid format, right? So this is extremely powerful. This is extremely powerful just by knowing configuring and just by being able to click three or four things, let alone all the little views and all the normal things that are there within SQL, you can get quite far with this and it's amazingly simple to use. It was meant to be that way. Now there's one thing we can't do though. So let's see over here, this is number 58. Notice over here, let me just move it over a little bit. Number 58 over here. So everyone can see everything. There's the text, there's the whatever in case we need to use it. 
We can even see the force parameters in there, right? Not the force parameters, but the parameters, sorry. And what we do is we'll take number 58 and we'll go down to track queries. I put 58 in here ahead of time just so I, because, because I didn't want the screen to, to hold. And look at that. We can actually see it. So extremely beneficial right over here. We can view the query. We can compare. You guys can see the comparison of the plans. We can do force. Now, ordinarily, inside of a, inside of a um, non-cloud environment, like if you're running D365 on-prem, if you see a plan like that that's going pretty bad, you're going to take it. And you're going to turn right around and click on, you know, force plan real fast and get users up to running at decent speeds, right? It's a quick thing commonly done. But in this particular case, what you want to do is a little bit different for the cloud. I'm going to talk about it right here, what the real benefit is, because I think this is what confuses a lot of people. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right now and we'll take the camera and kind of close out and talk about what we do. Wow, if you just saw the query store, it really made it easier to get access to a large amount of things. For those of us, for those of you in the cloud, there was somewhat of a little bit of a drag because of the fact that, you know, I mean, you couldn't quite use the force plan like you could inside of SQL, which is the reason why I didn't explicitly show it. But, you know, um, hey, there's still a lot of good information there. And that's something that I wanted to make quite clear to everyone that this is still a very powerful tool inside your arsenal. Just being able to see things like when there's a degradation or something's running slower at this time as opposed to that time. And these were the inputs and this is what SQL was, was, was thinking when it did it. Extremely precious information, trust me. It's enough to do a lot of good things. It's just not now. It's after your restore that you find out. And then code move to be able to, sub, to, be able to correct the subsequent you know, problem area. So hope you guys really did like it. Now, if you like that, we're gonna have a part two and a part three where we're gonna cover some other tools inside the arsenal because we're not finished. I've promised to have a series where we're gonna walk through step by step um, each one of those tools and just sort of explain them. Now, and also too, one more thing also, if you need to know more about um, query tuning and things like that, I've had a number of blog posts on my blog that you can go out and go read. So keep that in mind. Um, all of them come, every case that I use comes from a real life case that I've done on, that I've done, that I've done on some implementation with some big bad problem. And for many of you, um, several of you have actually called me out to your implementation. So you probably can recognize some of those cases written anonymously, but you've probably seen a few of them from where we went out there and solved some things. So. Keep that in mind. Great area to be learning. Hope you guys are liking it. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much for all the positive emails and positive feedback. Um, we will be pushing to a part two next. We're not finished yet. Take care. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.